Moving on to Sunday night on ITV, we had a new uh, six-part, the start of a new six-part uh, series taking place in India. It was the Good Karma Hospital, uh, starred Amanda, I'm doing a Gary now, Amanda Don't Redman do Gary. as Dr. Lindsay Fonseca, who runs oh, this... Oh, Lydia, little... you are Lydia, doing a Gary. Lydia, I saw, and it's in front of me as well. God's sake. It's sort of a ramshackle hospital. The path sort of we follow in this first episode is of Dr. Ruby Walker, who's sort of, she's like a junior doctor, isn't she? One of the things is that the medicine that they practice in India is a lot more sort of freewheeling than all the sort of admin that you have to go through uh, in the UK. Dr. Ruby, by the way, is played by Amrita Akaria, who I'm sure Gary will remember from Game of Thrones, but I can't remember. She played one of the Dothraki, Luke, which I'm sure you knew. Oh, really? One of the Doths? The Dothraki alongside um, Carl Drogo. And she goes... It is almost like another language. I have no idea what <laughs> you're Dothraki saying. Dothraki is another language. You should look it up. She applies for a job in India, thinks it's a uh, like a sort of well-to-do clinic, but finds she's, she's at the Good Karma Hospital... And she's got to do a year there before she sort of can apply to go to this other nicer hospital. Yeah. Is that sort of the... And the other doctors there, you've got the nice sort of father figure. Um, is that Dr. Nea? I'm just looking at yes. her. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then you've got the sort of harsh, sort of young, brash Dr. Varma. The big plots, I suppose, were the sort of the young sort of drug dealing kids, one of whom dies. The sort of culture shock with the, the, the woman who gives birth to another daughter... And Lydia Fonseca promises him a son because she knows if he's not promised a son, he would abort the baby. The baby turns out to be a, a, a girl. The girl they they then discover has a heart condition. They initially say, well, you know, if she's going to die anyway, let her die. And so it's an interesting take on what's acceptable someone else and what, yeah. you know... That's probably what I would like more of, and I think they did that a bit. It's one of them rare things that I went to a screening of, and I enjoyed it. What you get by going to a screening that you don't get if I'd have watched it, you know, like you did on a previous site yeah. or on ITV, is that Dan Sefton, the writer, um, is a still a working doctor with okay. the, the NHS. He still does weekends. <laughs> for the NHS and this is based on his time when he first was a junior doctor and they sent him to South Africa okay he set it though in in India and uh, the cast film for three months in Sri Lanka it's a thing where if you'd seen this on previews you may not have enjoyed it as mm, much no I know what you mean that. yeah yeah I don't, you get the backstory I can see all the merits in this I can see why ITV like it I can see why an audience would like it mm. and I enjoyed the first episode however Sadly, I think it's not something that I would watch no. on a weekly basis. It's for the sort of more mature people, I think, isn't mm. it? I mean, I wonder if it was commissioned after the success of The Dorals, which is another show yeah. set abroad. Not as light as The Dorals. It's no. got its darker moments, but it's still quite playful. One thing we didn't mention was old uh, Neil Morrissey's bobbing round in here. Is sort of that a, was my least favourite aspect of the con bar owner who's sort of like the comic mm. relief. He, he and uh, Amanda Redman's character um, have sort of got a sort of friends with benefits or enemies with benefits. Which, which, <laughs> which really, didn't um, true, yeah. you know, if, if I was being overly critical and it's it's a bit of light entertainment, I don't think you should be, but that really didn't gel for me at all. No. I didn't believe that this Doctor who's well respected. And she's and well very of. sort of forthright and he's mm. very, sort of maybe like an opposites attract type thing. So I really liked her in this. I, I, mm. I don't always like her. I think she's a bit too scenery chewing sometimes, but I think she suited this quite well. Sort of forceful, but with sort of like a motherly side to her. You know, she took uh, Ruby under her, uh, her wing. It's not for two youngish men in their early thirties. Oh, okay. But I do think we're getting that... we're getting past young youngish. I like the ish. I, c I can still do with the ish. <laughs> I think Amrita Ankara was a very good, was a believable lead. I thought she was an easy person yeah. to like and to take on this journey. And I was glad that the whole thing wasn't just about her being wide-eyed. I, I, um, yeah. I'm glad as well that you said that the Phyllis Logan and Philip Jackson thing is yes. it's carrying on because it felt yeah. like, you know, on, well, you don't watch it, but on Death in Paradise, you sort of get the weekly plots because it's no, a weekly No, it is a plot where and she it, goes back over there. Uh, Dr. Varma treats her uh, mm. because she, she wants to die there because it's nicer and okay. it, it gives her a nicer yeah. part. Of uh, on the whole, it was an enjoyable sort of like, you know, it's, it's Sunday night escapism at the end of the mm. day. You put it up there with... 
the Durrells with, I suppose, going back a few years, Wild at Heart did something yeah. similar. So it is a staple Sunday night thing, you know. It's, it's completely it's almost, inoffensive. Yeah, but the culture stuff was the most interesting stuff about it. Mm. The, the thing and about I hope the, the that boy, they will, the boy. Will, yeah, they will pick up on that more. I can't say. I do know for a fact that the Phyllis Logan death story or cancer story will be a big feature. And the worst some aspects of it, I really liked, but it's just not. It's for not me our on a sort of thing, basis. no.